This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools, quality tools, essential support. Well, it's Monday, guys. Let's get started again. Let's uh, go see what's going on here. We have a say, kitchen AC unit that keeps tripping the breaker and they keep resetting it. I've went in here and taken some basic looks around and got some basic information. What we got right here, 80 amp breaker that keeps tripping. And we need to go up here on the roof and see what's causing it. This is K1, and of course it's raining. Wonderful weather. And uh, we're pumping heat, so it's not a immediate refrigeration issue, at least with the circuit that's running. Now we could have fan motors failing, could have all kinds of stuff. Everything's R22. Both compressors are running. So what do we got tripped in here? We have a blower, motor going out, a condenser fan motor. What's failing? Looks like something's shorting. We gotta start digging in to find out. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with our total amp draw here. We're pulling 50 amps on that leg. On that one in blue, 43.6. That could be from three phase components versus single phase components. Be the one reason for the unbalance. Go to the compressor, usually your big hitters 15, 15. We are below the 20% threshold of 80. So currently, as it runs, we're not having a major issue. We could be short cycling the compressor. It's a possibility. They are electronic thermostats, but anything's possible. Let's go ahead and start checking our connection to the compressor. Push the button to record the errors. First display is the most recent. Recall second one down. There we go. Smack your button. 82. Main power board reset outage occurred. Well, that's probably because we keep resetting the breaker. Hit it again. 24. Low pressure switch is open. Now think about that. Low pressure switch, what would cause that to trip? If the fan would stop running the um, blower, your suction pressure would start to drop because you have no load going across that evaporator. We may have a fan failing. 25. Low pressure switch 2. So we have 24, 25. It's open three times during a demand. Reset to restore compressor 2. Hit it again. 24. Back to that again. So during one demand, it tripped that many times. Let's take a look at our suction pressure. Running a 60 pound suction, which is about 34 degrees. So we're not, we're nowhere near, so that should be an issue. However, let's stop that out. See if we can stop that blower from running. I think it's this one right here. It'd be a little dangerous here and see if we can pull a wire off that contactor. Okay. Compressors are still running. Look at that pressure there on the suction side. Down to 44. It's at 60 a minute ago, and that's less than a couple seconds there. See right there's S88, so you know that's the one. This is the compressor. There we're at 40. Running a 18 degree uh, vapor temperature. It's come up a little bit. TXV's trying to counter it. Give it long enough and probably shut down. I mean, I ain't, can't be for certain, but I mean, what do you, you know, all you can do is start adding things together and start figuring it out. There must be something wrong with the heat because 
gas is turned off, which wouldn't surprise me. I don't need it very often for that. Um, the belt, I changed it 622. Holy crap, so it's been a month and a half already. Uh, that was pulling 15 amps. This is rated for 13.9. So it's going a little faster than what it should, so I must not have looked too close at that, so that's a little over. SF amps, 14.4, so we're just a touch over. Let me turn that down a little bit. That wouldn't cause it to, well, what it would cause is the motor to get too hot, which it ain't really that hot, and it could go off on thermal, and it would shut off. But that wouldn't cause the breaker to trip. What's causing the breaker to trip? That's what I want to know. So there's 45. It's holding there. So let's go ahead. Shut her down to make sure she's safe. And let's go ahead and make sure the power's dead here. All dead on that. Let's... All right, so let's slow this down one turn. Okay, pull a couple screws out. Slides out. When we loosen that up a little bit and reduce that, the belt's gonna need to tighten back up again. Yeah, it's been clanged on quite a few times. That wasn't very tight. See that? One of the reasons why these, I've been starting, I went back to using these over linesmen's. Linesmen's are great for pounding on stuff. Not that they're made for that, but they work real good for it. So we got that loosened up. So we got some penetrating oil. Which I don't want to get too nuts with it because I don't want it in the place where the belt actually is going to be at. But grab these little channel locks, which really ain't good for much anything other than something like that. Oh yeah, somebody really got on there stupid. <sighs> yep, gotta love stupid people. Gotta love them. God bless their souls. We got to spray some in the middle. We're gonna have to break some rules here. There we go. Yep. Took a little something, but we got it. Let's see where that puts our belt at. A little bit down in there. Now we gotta wipe off that stinking oil. So we'll get a rag on that. Or we can hit with some brake cleaner and get that off of it either way. There we go, we'll just stick that in there for now. Let's see what kind of amp draw we got. Yeah, I told them that some of these pulleys needed replaced. Yeah, that pulley's got some good wear in there and that's probably what they did to get around half to replace it was to squeeze it together more I'm pretty impressed with this cheap Pittsburgh that bowl socket deal there it actually holds on to it does a pretty good job can't hardly go wrong on sockets so that's Okay. Go ahead and see what the amp draw is before we get too nuts. Now we're down to 11.3, capable of 13.4. So we technically could back it up one turn maybe. Let's go ahead and kill power. Or it might have a one of these motor leads here taking a dump. I mean, it's just hard to tell. And I wonder too, here's the other thing. Are we having problems with it locking out and they're just turning it off to get it running again? Who knows? Uh, getting a hold of the person that might have actually been here probably isn't going to be very easy. So let's just go ahead and lock it, lock it up in there. I checked all this with a straight edge earlier. I hear a little bit of noise in that motor. Let's spin this motor and see if it sounds uh, sounds bad.
bearings seem fine we're still above the groove that's war all right let's put that back together like i said that's not the real reason let's take a look in here see if there's nothing make sure there's nothing uh coming apart in that area gonna be an investigator that's what we're doing got them all wire tied together or wire got tape on the nuts okay i don't see anything here on that take a look at some of our other high amperage type components these compressors here were made are done in 20 according to what the date code is on them nice lugs on those Slugs there, so we know it's not the compressors causing it. I just checked some of these contactors, so we could be having phasing going on. All those are tight. So it's just hodgepodge city in here. I replaced some of these capacitors. What a hodgepodge mess. Look for shorts. Any of the spots coming through. It's got plastic insert there. That's a hodgepodge hot mess. Let's look at some of that garbage. Now I did replace one of the evaporator fans in one of the other units. Got some inplay on that. That could be shorting. I did not tear every one of these apart. I don't feel very good. Let's see about this one here. Woo! That bad boy is hot. That is, yeah, you shouldn't be having your hand on it that long. I, I, you should be able to leave your hand on it. Yeah, they're probably all undersized motors, which is why I got OEM motors for them. That one's fairly warm and not as bad as this one here is. Yeah, that one's way, way hotter. This is for the kitchen, so you can't leave it off for very long. That is quite the capacitor setup right there. Capped off the extra one there. Because I didn't use the capacitor over there. So that, you know what? Since there's a capacitor right there, I wonder if it's got double capacitors hooked up on it. That's just not good. What's bad is we don't know if that's what's causing it or not. Now this one here, they didn't use the white and brown wire there. Of course, it's just kind of sitting there. Got some of the wires out of there. Some of them are just still pain in the butt. I'm gonna get this replaced hopefully later uh, this week. That, that is bad. That is really bad. Okay, the highest leg on there on that motor is 12.6. We're under 13. Grand total amp, which I really don't like playing with electric in the water. 50 amps. 50 amps. 42. I don't know. I'm going to go down there and ask him some better questions and find out. Got those wire tied up. Ain't the way I like to do it, but it's not going to dangle into other things. We can fix it when I come back. I'm going to recommend to replace both these fans. The one's too hot and the bearings are going out on this one. I got to go down there and find out about this trip and breaker if it's just the resetting it to make it run. Because they said I had to do it four or five times. I just can't imagine. Boom! Okay, let's do it again. Boom! Let's do it again. Every hour. Yeah. Don't make a lot of sense to me. All right. Just like I figured, bad translations, bad, bad whatever. Um, asked him, was you having to trip the, was you have to turn the breaker on and off to make it run or was it in the middle position? When I did it to that, now granted, you may not be talking to the same manager. Might've been three people that told another person to tool another person that you're finally getting it. 
but she did not believe it was in the middle position. So if that's the case, then it was going out on low pressure switch because maybe the blower motor was uh, over amping. Uh, but as far as the condenser fan motors, if they weren't tripping, you know, they're working, but they really should be replaced. Uh, I'm gonna recommend that. And with the amperage being down below by an amp, we should be good there. Um, yeah, this is just one of them things where once again, you figure it's pretty cut and dry, but it comes down to uh, terminology. You've got to make sure you question the customer right. And the reason why I didn't do it is because half the time you aren't talking to the same manager. You're talking to somebody that called it in or just left a note for the next person and they don't even know either. And sometimes just a waste of time to even ask, or they may tell you wrong and then boom, send you on the wrong uh, path of travel. They're trying to find the right problem. So. That's what we're doing, ordering to uh, see if we can get uh, two motors authorized to be replaced. Uh, right now the thing is running and uh, the refrigerant charge looked to be fine. Reset the codes. If we come back and it has a low pressure switch again, then we know we've got a fan motor uh, failing and uh, we'll have to have that replaced if that's the case. So anyhow guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and you wanna see more like it, give it a thumbs up. Till next time, we'll catch you on the next one. Consider subscribing and later. So there you go, having to reset breaker every half hour. There, yeah, yep. So it did say having to reset breaker every half hour. Reset because it's tripped or resetting the breaker just to reset the unit. Really would have been reset the unit. Would have been resetting the unit, so yeah.